Garrett's gear, season. yes. So Brooke was 12, Georgia was 14. Both these girls' bodies would be found in Alvin's swamp, and they, they had been beaten to death. Heidi Fay, she was 23 years old. She disappeared on the 10th of October, 1983. Her body would be found on the Calder Road property in April of 1984. And Calder, when I say the Calder Road property, that's the quote unquote official 25 acre field. Texas killing field. Yeah. So that's the, the official sanctioned area. Sanctioned's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. If you, you, you can actually easily find it. Uh, it's right behind that church. I can't remember the name of the church now, but uh, it's on the highway there. Yeah, I mean, if you type in Calder Road and yeah, you Interstate 45, it. you'll find it pretty quickly. Uh, moving forward, there's Sandra Ramber. She was 14, disappeared on October 26th, 1983, and is still missing to this day. There's a Jane Doe that was found in this time in February 1986. And they're sure it's not Sandra? They are pretty sure it's not Sandra. We don't know who she is or where she came from. Uh, I, she's what we the term we used before was the missing missing. We don't, nobody appears to even know she's missing. Yeah. Uh, Laura Miller, she was 16, disappeared on September 10th, 1984, and was found... On the same day as Jane Doe. On the same... Yeah, I was just suddenly that caught me off guard. It's on the same day. Um, so Laura Miller, we'll talk about her briefly because she was last seen at a convenience store. A lot of them seem to have been last seen at a convenience store. There's two store. or three that were seen at a convenience store. I've gotten but, four so far. But what I want to talk about is Laura Miller is... So she disappeared, and her body was all eventually found. And I, it was found on the the Calder on the actual killing field. Yeah. But her dad, Tim, is an interesting figure in this entire case. Oh yeah, he got because, into it in a big way. Yeah, because Tim Miller, the man lost his daughter, and I get that. But he, he, he it's almost like he went on a crusade. He found a calling. He had to find the man who was responsible. And I'm not going to say anything against him having done that. He's done some great things. He started a company called Equisearch. They've gone all over the country, actually all over the world, using horses and boats to look for lost girls. Like, they do good work. Mm -hmm. But Tim has also done some very not good things in the search for his daughter's killer. And he has pointed the finger at some people and made some very, I would say, some very bad moves. And we're going to talk about those oh, in yeah. our theories when we talk about our suspects. Uh, he has expressed some regret for that, too. He has. It's <laughs> yeah. not like the man just believes he's never done anything wrong. He's no. a human being and he gets it. Yeah. But it's it's concerning to me some of his level of involvement at times. Mm. Back to the list, we have Shelly Sykes. She was 19. She disappeared on May 24th, 1986, and she's still missing. Her uh, car was found abandoned on I-45, and she's one of the ones I'll point out because she was 4 foot 11 and 90 pounds. So it would mm -hmm. kind of look like the profile of a preteen yeah. or early teenage Even girl. She was 19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Suzanne Renee Richardson disappeared on October 7th of 1988, and she was 22 years old. She's also still missing. She was five foot eight and 140 pounds. So she's so an outlier. She's kind of an outlier here. Because I, I mean, I, she's tall. Yeah, I can't think of any like 12 year old girl that I've ever met that's also five eight. Uh, yeah. You know, I have a family member who at 15 was about 5'8 or 5'9. Five, five yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's I mean, just, yeah, so it just depends know. on the person. But yeah, she yeah. is a bit of an outlier in, in our general profile yeah. we're building here. We go to Lynette Bibbs. She was 14, disappeared on February 1st of 1996. She was found two days later. Uh, she was out with her friend Tamara Fisher, and Tamara, both of the girls disappeared at the same time. And both of their bodies were found on the same day, which is two days later. They were found on the side of the road in Cleveland, Texas. Uh, I had Shot got this one. Well, I, this, this is the one that I got mixed up with uh, the girls in the beginning because it was Tamara who was shot in the head and Lynette who was shot twice in the head and once in the leg. So I, I incorrectly said that earlier. Yeah, it's hard to keep them straight. There's a lot yeah. of killings here. There's another Jane Doe, and she was found in September of 91. 
Crystal Baker, she was 13. She disappeared on March 4th, 1996. From a convenience store. From a convenience yeah. store and would be found the very next day. So the convenience store is just like Laura Miller and Heidi Faye. Um, Crystal Brooks, was beaten, Georgia. strangled. What's that? And also Brooks in Georgia. Brooks Bracewell, Georgia Gear, also disappeared at the oh, convenience yeah, store. Oh, right. yeah, you're right. You're right. Crystal was found, like I said, she's found the very next day. She was underneath an under uh, highway o- overpass, and she had been beaten and strangled and sexually assaulted. So this is a case mm-hmm. where we it's obvious sexual assault because the body was found so fast. Mm-hmm. We move forward another year, and there's Laura Smither. She was 12. She was found or went missing on April 3rd of 1997 and would be found 17 days later. She left her house to go jogging and just disappeared. I'm sorry. I'm just shaking my head because, like, what 12-year-old girl are we saying? Like, yes, let's go out jogging by yourself. That does she, seem, yeah, she, kind of odd. Uh, so she wanted, she was, she was a ballerina. She wanted to be a ballerina, mm-hmm. like, for real life. And somebody said, you need to train. And one of the things you need to do to make your body stronger is to start running. All right. Yeah. That's why she started running. Okay. And mm. this... This unfortunately led to her demise. She was found in a retention pond in Pasadena. And she's actually... Go ahead. Is that in that area? Sorry. I just think of Pasadena, California. No, Pasadena, Pasadena. Texas. Again, it's within like a 20-mile radius. Yeah. So, Laura Smither is one of the first cases where there was enough media attention to the whole thing that the cops actually started talking to each other in all of those areas and that's when they started putting this larger picture together and realizing there's a bigger problem than any one of us Mm -hmm. realized Mm -hmm. uh there's there's three more that i have here one of them i was actually really hesitant to put on the list and that is the next one which is Tot Harriman. She is she really was, an outlier. She's completely an outlier because though she dis, she disappeared on I-45 because she was last seen driving on it and it was the 12th of July of 2001 but she's 57 so she, she does not seem to match what we've been talking about so far in the demographic of these girls. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I mean she could have been small. There is Sarah Trusty. She was 20 of 2002 and would be found just 14 days later. Uh, she'd been last seen riding her bike. She's another one, five foot five, 130 pounds. Again, kind of, kind of within the range, more so than I would say with Tot. Yeah, more than Tot, but still kind mm-hmm. of an outlier. She's still on the outlier. And then the last one is going to be uh, Teresa Venejas. She was 16, disappeared on October 31st of 2006. So we've got, what, like 20 or no, 30 Almost years? 30. Almost 30 years of... Uh, I've almost four. That's 35 years. Yeah. If it goes from 71 to 30. 2006, that's yeah. 35, 35 years. 35, yeah. Gosh. Although it could have been more than one. It's possible that somebody like took over the reins. And there mm-hmm. were some gaps in there, too. Yeah. There's totally gaps in there, and I think we're going to have to talk about some of this stuff in terms of single versus multiple killers or a a rapist or abductee, abductors in the theory section. As I said, there's so little pattern between when they disappear. Like, it seems like the geography is one of the main things. Some are shot, some are not. Some have their hands bound and their feet bound, some do not. Some are found fully clothed, some are found fully naked, some are completely decomposed, some are just dumped so that they're able to be found the very next day. I mean, even the ones who disappeared from their cars, there's really no crime scene because though their car is there, there was no sign of real struggle. So it's it's extremely hard to figure out what in the hell is going on yeah. in this area. Well, you know, Something bad. And that's the interesting thing is that, well, you know, how do you get somebody 12 or to 57, whatever, do you trust you and get in your car? How do you do that? I you don't always. When you're a total stranger. And well, I mean, I bet, but I mean, there's, 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 you know, a couple of types of people that you get to, who could actually do that, mm-hmm. right? like policemen. You know, there is that. Not there, that I, yeah, I want to anger no, any of our police no, listeners. I think uh, what you're getting at, Joe, is a figure of authority is yeah. a better way to say that. Could be a policeman, could be a fireman, yeah. could be a paramedic, could be any um, a, a road service worker. I mean, I mean, there's anybody who looks like they should be able to, they're responsible to help you. Well, yeah. or, you know, a cop has an interesting position in a, sorry, we're like talking a little bit about theories right now, but 
you know, in the instances where cars were found abandoned, you say, you know, a cop could have pulled them over and said, you're under arrest and put them in the back of their car. And, you know, most people aren't going to resist too terribly much. There's not going to be much of a crime scheme. It's just going to look like there's a left behind car. Mm -hmm. And then, whoops. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different stories you can tell as a cop. You can say, you know, I, I'm here. My, your parents sent me to take you home. You know, if she's 12 or if she's, you know... And in the 70s, family. that was not something that most pe most kids knew was a bogus story. You know, yeah. there was a huge campaign in the 70s and 80s to not take candy from strangers and not let people tell you that your parents sent them yeah, to pick you up. Cops. Yes. I mean... <laughs> Right? There are certain figures that have always been quote unquote trustworthy mm -hmm. yeah. and that generally the population will do what they say. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Usually. So Okay, now that we've angered all our law enforcement listeners. No, no. Uh, I, I mean I mean it's again it's it's a figure of authority or protection or help. Yeah. That's I mean that's really what that boils down to. Yeah, that's that would account for a lot. It would. But it still doesn't prove damn thing, no, unfortunately. No, it, it doesn't prove anything. No. So what we have here is we have a theory section. Well, normally we would call this the theory section, but really today it's more of the suspect section. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about our suspects. And we have a huge laundry list of scumbags that we're going to talk about here. Basically, we had a long list of bodies, and yes, now sir. we have a long list of scumbags. Yes. Yeah, not, not every single one of them is necessarily a scumbag. Bag. Okay, there's, what are, there's, there's at least one guy on here that oh, no, suspect you're right. was not guilty. Okay, the very first guy is not a scumbag. Yeah, the rest of them so. I consider scumbags. Thank you, Joe. That's yeah. a good clarification. Yeah. So let's talk about the very first guy. That is Robert Abel. And he was brought to the attention of authorities. Uh, he lived in Texas. He lived in the uh, in the area actually lived... adjacent to the Calder Road killing fields. Yeah. And he was brought Unfortunately to Unfortunately for him. Yeah. Brought to authorities' attention, 1989, maybe 1990, uh, and that he was brought to them by his soon-to-be third ex-wife. He owned a 11-acre property adjacent to the killing fields, um, and that's where Laura Miller and three other bodies were found. He initially participated in the searches, at least one search for bodies, and he he had a horse stable, and he loaned horses to the, the police to use to search for bodies. So from all, from the outside, it looks like this guy is trying to do good. Uh, the By the way, the stable he ran was called Stardust Trails. Aww. So he seems like a good guy. Abel was a smart guy. I mean, he had worked for NASA for quite a few years and he was part of the team that figured out how to get the Saturn rockets into space. Yeah, they, uh, so, they put rocket motors on them. That's what yeah. made the difference. Well, he was a literal rocket scientist. He was. Yeah, so that means yeah. he was actually very smart. Yeah. Uh, I underlined the word very when I said it yeah. there. Yeah, So, but, you know, I mean, people are people and he was fallible and he was married several times and... Each of his wives said that he had anger problems, so he wasn't a perfect human. So he did this thing, which is very bad, is he threatened to beat each of his wives. He did the but good he, thing of actually he didn't not... didn't do it. But. Yes, he never actually struck them. Instead, he would always storm off. And sometimes he was gone for hours. I believe there's at least one instance where he was gone for a day. So he just, he just left. He got away. Mm. But he never actually hit them. But he did hit his horses. He apparently would use poles and chains on horses when they made him angry. What a jerk. Yeah, that, that's not standard operating procedure. Uh, no, no, absolutely yeah. not standard operating procedure with horses. It actually does not work. But Generally, standard operating procedure is never includes hitting things with chains. Or poles. Yeah, I would think or not. Poles. I would think not. Like, I yeah. can't think of a thing... Well, I know a motor or two that I've had, like a you know an actual combustion engine that I whacked it with a pole and it worked better. But that's the rare yeah. exception. All right. Yeah. I'll take Generally it. speaking, I would not I would not whack a horse with anything because they're bigger than I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot bigger. Yes, yeah. Yeah. they are. They really yeah. are. The, okay, so so he's he lives next to the property. He's a very very smart guy. He's known to have this anger problem, and he's known to strike animals. And he disappears when he's angry. And he so he can disappear when he's angry. Maybe him perfectly fit an FBI profile 
of the person who they believed was probably killing these young girls. I don't know, man. That's, that would fit a lot of people. It really would. Yeah. And, and this is where Tim Miller, um, Laura's dad, comes in because, unfortunately... Tim found out about this this semi match of Abel to the profile and he latched on and he totally went off the rails and he accused him to he, he made such a stink with the police the police looked into Abel he made such a stink in the community that Abel was ostracized he went so far as to to mount these illegal searches and digs of the property around and then his Abel's property and then actually went on to Abel's property and had people digging looking for bodies like he yeah. did he did this and police actually searched his house at least one time and yes. they really turned it upside down yeah, the and whole, his property and yeah, found nothing the, the, for their part the police did their job they went they investigated and what did they find nothing squat yeah. so they stopped looking at him because uh-uh. there was nothing to support it tim miller on the other hand he didn't i mean this Again, Tim Miller uh, has apologized. He said he apologized to Robert Abel for this behavior, but unfortunately what it resulted in was Abel being isolated from the entire community. The man would walk down the street and people would yell, kill her, and get their daughters out of his way. That is how bad it was and how afraid people were of him because of everything that had been said. And all that happened really that he just happened to live next to where some bozo dumped some bodies, you know? And he happened also, to be good enough to try to help. Yeah. Yeah, also he beat his horses. And that he, sucks, he, yeah. He did bad things, but he didn't do them to these girls. Yeah. I don't think so. Like I said, Tim Tim uh, Miller, he, he says that he eventually apologized and that they talked and Abel understood, but the damage had been done. In 2005, Robert Abel died. Uh, he was driving a golf cart, and he drove his golf cart into the path of an oncoming train. That death was ruled an accident, though no. to me that smells quite a lot like suicide. I agree. But, but yeah. I don't know. But that's that's where everything about Abel ends, and he's one of the big ones that you'll hear about. Yeah. But, but we... We're officially saying stop it. Yes, Abel. Right. Abel was an innocent man, and yeah. everything that I can tell. But if you if you do do a search on uh, this particular topic, his his name will come up in headlines. Oh yeah, there's yeah. a there's a huge article. One of the first articles I read about him, I was like, oh my god, why haven't they arrested this man? It was from like '96. It was a giant Texas Monthly article. I can't remember the author's name. And it was called, Is Robert Abel Getting Away With Murder? I and saw it's that one of the one. first ones you find. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, why aren't they? And then I started reading everything after that and realized, you know, the, it was not what it appeared to be yeah. based the on the information or the accusations that were made. Yeah. So let's move away from Robert Abel. Yeah. We're going to well, move on. He might have done it, but yeah. Very, Probably very, not. very doubtful to me. Yeah. We're going to say like one on a scale of one to a hundred. Correct. Okay. Next up, we have Kevin Edison Smith. He's got a middle name. He gets my vote. So <laughs> everybody in this story, after Robert Abel, I use their middle name. Oh, they're all serial killers. Okay. Yes. Well, they actually all want me. You remember Crystal Baker? Yeah. yeah. She was the girl who disappeared in March of 96 and then was found in uh, under the overpass mm-hmm. uh, 40 miles away. She got into a argument with grandma and then ran away. She was also, she was seen at the, she's one of your ones, Joe, that was seen at the convenience store. Yeah. She was the using phone. the payphone to call her mom. That's what she was doing. Well, because of what a screw up everything was between all of the local police departments, she was listed as missing for two weeks. Her family didn't know where she was for two weeks, even though they had found her body the very next day. Uh. Mm-hmm. There was nothing that the police could find at the crime scene to indicate who had killed her, and they had no leads, and so her case was cold for 14 years. Then, 14 years later, so that would be about 2010, there was uh, an investigator, somebody in the forensics office, and I cannot remember who this lady's, what this lady's name was, but for some reason she was looking at this case, and she f- decided to send off the one, I think it was a dress that they had of Crystal's, 
and sent it to the lab to just screen it for DNA. And lo and behold, they found actual usable DNA on it. Cool. And Love even better, happens. at the same time, Kevin Addison Smith in Louisiana had been booked on charges and Louisiana law said, if you get booked and you get thrown into jail, we're going to take your DNA and drop your, your DNA into the system. And he was a he was a match Wow! to this case 14 years later, which is amazing. That's fortuitous. It's good he didn't get arrested like a month later. In a different yeah. state. If yeah. he'd been arrested yeah. in a different state that didn't have this law, we may never know this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the pl- Texas Police Department, they get involved and they, they interrogate. He, he says that he, he doesn't have any knowledge of it, he doesn't know what they're talking about, but slowly but surely, and then eventually he, he admits to it, and he says he never sexually assaulted her, which we know is a lie, because she was sexually assaulted. Well, I mean, technically... Technically, I guess she could have had sex prior to him killing her, is well, that what you're getting have, at? She could have been sexually assaulted, either bef- by, you know... I don't know. He could have not killed her, I guess, technically, or some some mm. some really did. horrible human could have come along and been like, "Oh, a dead body," and done uh, necrophilia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, or you know, she could have been assaulted before. It could mm-hmm. have been. Yeah, there, uh, you're right. That would be rather opportunistic. I, I'm like. gonna put my money on the fact that he's a liar. Okay, that's fair. So let's just keep running with that. If yeah, you're okay fair. with that, totally fair. Okay, he probably is. Okay, so although I guess if you admit to murdering them, I don't know why you wouldn't also admit to sexually assault. Thing, but whatever. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is why I put my money on it. Yeah. Okay. So, he he said that, like I said, he he says he never assaulted her, but he said he did give her a ride, and he admits that in that day, in that not necessarily that day, but that time frame of his life, he was drinking a lot, and he was doing a lot of drugs, and so he doesn't remember exactly what was going on, but he remembers that. Uh, quote unquote, she started freaking out and hitting and punching him. Maybe that's because he was trying to rape her. Uh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's yeah, that's well, kind of what I would think yeah. was going yeah. on. He probably wasn't driving when this was happening, and he said that his response was to strangle her, and then, and then she was dead. And then he decided, I don't know what to do, so he dumped her body, and he drove her body many many miles away. So. It, Almost makes you wonder, like he had seen this spot before, is a good place to dump a body. Mm-hmm. It's a little Maybe. funny that he took that that corpse so far. Again, that's what I'm saying is like I don't necessarily know why you wouldn't, why you would say, yeah, I strangled her and then dumped her body, but all, but I didn't, I didn't rape her. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. Why? Well, I mean, fine. yeah, I mean the thing to do with his DNA, you just say, yeah, I mean she was willing, we had sex, you know. And, and then I dropped her off. And then now we had on the sex. corner. Now we had sex, and then she freaked out, and I had to strangle her to death, and then I had to get rid of the body. You know? No, no, the, the, yeah. Devin's right. The smart money would be to be like, well, yeah, you found DNA. I was with her, and then yeah, I dropped her off. And She said that was her stop, so I let her out, and mm-hmm. I drove on my way. Yeah. yeah. That would be another way. Yeah. yeah. Now, this guy, how he managed to avoid the, the death penalty, I will not know, but he, he did manage to do so. So he is currently serving 40 years in prison. 40? Yeah. Not even life. Okay. No, no, it's Mm. a 40-year sentence. Yeah, that's how long he's in there. But the thing that Joe has pointed out and we're going to talk about now is the convenience store angle because Mm -hmm. if you remember Laura Miller back in 1984 also disappeared from the front of a convenience store. And there's a couple other girls. Uh, Laura Miller actually disappeared from the front of the same convenience store as Crystal. But there's a couple others who disappeared from the fronts of convenience stores. And this guy, you know, he was strangling women, and it, he strangled this girl at least. And we know that he was in the area. We also know that he was living, oh God, I think it was over the course of 20 years. He lived in 17 cities in four different states. Hmm. So he was he was a, a rambling man is what I was going to say. But he was, he, was, he was roaming around doing work. So... It's entirely possible that there are girls in this age bracket who were strangled in these cities where he lived and he could be responsible. Sure. Unfortunately, to 
play the other side of the coin. There's girls in other cities where he did not live who were in this age bracket who were who died by strangulation. So we just because that happens, we can't say yeah. it's him. Mm-hmm. A lot uh, of that going on, unfortunately. Yeah, but they are they, they did run his DNA, and that's the hard part, like we talked about. So many of these bodies, they're in a marsh or they're in a ditch for yeah, months. There's no good evidence. There's no good DNA evidence. left. No. It's hard as hell to get anything that's usable. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, We've talked about uh, Kevin Edison Smith enough, so let's talk about Henry Lee Lucas. Oh, that guy. Yeah, so Henry Lee Lucas, he's a self-confessed serial killer. Yeah, uh, he's thought to have exaggerated some of his, uh, the number of his kills just a little bit. Uh, Yeah, I I would agree with that. I believe uh, we'll get through it and we'll talk about here the, the number that he claims, but he was arrested in Texas uh, in June of 1983. Uh, that's when he really kind of came onto the radar in Texas for this kind of stuff. When he was 15, he ran away from home. I mean, don't get me wrong, his home life was horrible. Um, his family was terrible. I mean, his mother was a prostitute. She made him watch her with clients. Like, this is not the good mm-hmm. upbringing mm-hmm. that a, a boy should have. Yeah. So that any child should have. Yeah, any child should have. So, I mean, I, I you can understand why the kid left. But he says that he killed for the first time in 1951 when a girl refused his sexual advances. He then would go on in 1960 to kill his own mother with a knife. Uh, he said he didn't realize he had stabbed her yeah, at he first. Said, he said, I know, I, I heard the story. It's like he, he was like, you know, I just hit her, you know. And then I looked down and I saw the knife in my hand. And I was like, oopsie. And that's essentially, that really was his story. He didn't say oopsie exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He uh, he did end up going to jail for that, or prison. Yeah. He served 10 years for that crime. <laughs> Technically, he was supposed to serve 20 to 40, but unfortunately, the there was this push to early release because there's prison overcrowding, so right. he got and, out early. And the man who stabs his, his mother. mother to death is really the best candidate <laughs> yeah. for the yeah. early release program. Although yeah, they, they probably looked at it as an abusive situation where he's not likely to go out randomly killing people left and right. Oh, no, but the problem was his story didn't match up because he said, you know, like you said, he, he realized the knife was in his hand, and he said, oh, look, she's dead, and he ran away. Except and his sister... She wasn't, she she wasn't, wasn't dead. actually I dead. Know. His sister came and found their mother still alive, but she did not... She didn't live, live long enough to get to the hospital. Mm. Like, the guy... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. So, a really nice guy. A really nice guy. So, he gets out. This would be 1960. Uh, in 1971, no, like he, 1970. Or excuse me, 1970. He went in in ni- around 1960. He got out around 1970, and then in 1971, he was convicted of attempting to kidnap three girls. Uh, and after he yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. And then after they let him out for a second time, I know, they, thinking yeah. this guy is gonna just be real rehabilitated, no problem. Yeah, yeah. And after he after he got out from the conviction of of trying to kidnap those three girls. He, he continued to, to beat and kill. Yeah. Uh, he was arrested in right. 19... Yeah, not, not really. He was arrested in 1983 on charges of unlawful possession of a firearm, and that actually quickly grew into a larger charge uh, for the murders of both Frida Powell, uh, and Frida was a girl that he had met. Uh, I believe he met her in Florida. She's described as having, quote-unquote, intellectual impairment, so I don't know where she is on the range of impairments, what that means. Mm -hmm. But he had convinced this girl to travel with him and he treated her like a girlfriend until he grew tired of her. how old was he at this point? Oh, he is... So he... uh, He was born in 39, I think, or 36. Yeah, he's in his his early... Oh, no, he's uh, in his... 40s at this point, Dating I Dating a 15-year-old? Healthy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right. So so he, he's, he is charged for with killing Frida Powell. He's also charged at, at the same time with killing a pastor who had given him work and allowed him to stay in a building that his religious movement owned. So, like, he's all around just not a nice guy. Just murdering people. And this is where what Joe was talking about when we first talked about Henry Lee Lucas comes in, is that once he got arrested, he and he confessed to the first ones, 
he started confessing to everything. Yeah. His confessions, initially at least, seemed to be have related to the crimes that he committed. But then he started com- admitting involvement and guilt in crimes that were unsolved. And he seemed to be really good at filling in some details. So people kind of thought that it was him. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it seems like he's probably been discredited in almost everything that he's admitted to because he claimed credit for like 300 murders. That's yeah. crazy. Some, yeah, somebody did the math on a lot of these murders and it would, it would have required him to like drive for like a year, drive 370 miles a day. To mm-hmm. get around to all these places to commit these murders, and so yeah. obviously, I'm, I'm sure he killed lots of people. He, you know, but what, I, not I, as many as he confessed I, to. I hate to admit, you're right. He probably did kill a bunch of people, 